Hi everyone. So we hear the buzzword of sustainability everywhere. Today we are going to learn more about green mobility. We have a guest with us here today, Dr. Anil Garg. He is the CEO of Energy and Environment Foundation. So let's see what he has to say on green mobility. So the organization Energy and Environment Foundation has been organizing conferences for last 15 years on various uh, topics related to fields such as petroleum and gas, uh, coal, renewable energy, hydrogen, biofuels, water, waste to wealth. Um, and this organization has also been recognizing um, different individuals and organizations for their professional commitment and their outstanding contribution in these various fields such as energy, environment, sustainability, um, biotechnology, green hydrogen, water conservation and energy efficiency. So uh, we're glad to have Dr. Garg, uh, the CEO of the organization here with us today. So I'll begin with the first question. What advice would you give to young people interested in working in green mobility industry, Dr. Gar? Professor Sergey Gar, my organization, Energy and Environment Foundation, is organizing, as you have rightly said, in the field of energy, renewable energy, waste to wealth, water, and also giving excellence and global awards in various fields like energy efficiency, environment, sustainability, ESG, and other fields for recognizing the outstanding contribution and leadership role in various fields. Thank you very much for this introduction. Regarding green mobility, there are three components of green mobility. They are electric vehicles, number two, the biofuel mobility, and three is green hydrogen. These sectors contribute for the sustainable development of the environment, sustainability and leading towards net zero. To answer your question, young people, they should learn how to deal with sustainability. This means they should use the vehicles which are electric, biofuel vehicles or hydrogen vehicles and also do something great in the field of the energy efficiency, reduce pollution and act towards net zero. This all combined together lead to a sustainable development of the planet. Thank you, Dr. Garg. Uh, now, the next question I have for you is, what do you see as the biggest barrier to global EV adoption today and how are the leading markets overcoming it? Electric vehicles, they have a high cost. This is number one. And infrastructure is not readily available for that purpose as well as uh, government required to give some incentive and some uh, subsidy so that the things may move smoothly. Let's move on to the next question. How can EV infrastructure especially charging networks be scaled in both urban and rural areas, Dr. Gurg? Yeah, this is the biggest challenge that uh, infrastructure is not available throughout the world. 
but governments are very active and keen they are doing in rural and urban areas energy companies and other companies they are making charging stations and in, uh, creating infrastructure even in rural areas so dr garg what role do artificial intelligence and data analytics play in the future of green mobility as far as green mobility is concerned the artificial intelligence and the role of data analytics that is very important in creating infrastructure at low cost and driver free mobility that is required in times to come data they are being collected from various cities of the world and driver free cars which is driven by artificial intelligence they are available and in future about 20 years from now things will improve and sustainability will be the future for our planet let's move on to discussing about biomobility so dr garg how can biomobility play a complementary role alongside evs in the transportation sector dr sargam uh, the two part of this question is number one is the role of biomobility biomobility plays a very important role particularly number one that the sugars and ethanols they are used in addition to petroleum and also diesel they are being used particularly at present in petroleum and so they reduce the carbon emission and play somewhat green fuel second thing is that these uh, fuels developed from food and agriculture and others they are also being used as a biofuel they are being used in aviation sustainable aviation fuel and also in the marine sector the shipping sector like that and also play in heavy transportation and heavy industries so my next question is how do second and third generation biofuels differ from the first generation biofuels in terms of environmental impact second generation biofuel they are a derived from food and other uh, agriculture products whereas the third generation they are derived from algae and uh, bacteria and others and they play in significant significant role in sustainable aviation fuel also so dr gar where do you see green hydrogen making the most impact in the transportation sector professor the role of green hydrogen is mainly in heavy transportation shipping and aviation sectors because it is very light and the weight of batteries is heavy so in aviation sector as well as in shipping sector it plays a very important role whereas 
electric vehicles are good for private cars, buses and trucks, but heavy trucks require green hydrogen. So Dr. Gert, my next question is, what are some of the major challenges in producing green hydrogen affordably and how soon uh, might these be overcome? Professor Sargam, the answer to your question, which is very, very relevant nowadays, the cost of green hydrogen is very high. It is true. Why it is high? Because green hydrogen is produced from electrolysis, for which electrolysis of water, for mm -hmm. which water is required. And there is a scarcity of water. There are technology which is being used that green hydrogen can be produced from seawater mm -hmm. and catalysts are being used that is lot of research going on world over there is chances that this cost will be reduced in times to come and green hydrogen will be viable for transportation sustainable transportation in times to come my next question is how important is international cooperation uh, in developing hydrogen infrastructure dr gard infrastructure of hydrogen as a fuel is very very important and it is very costly affair so world over organizations are cooperating particularly Germany, Japan, South Korea, Australia, they are playing a, vis a major role in cooperating with each other. Companies are very, very cooperative and pooling their funds for R&D so that the infrastructure can be developed and the cost of hydrogen, green hydrogen, be reduced less than one dollar. Mm -hmm. As we discussed earlier, the Tesla is having major focus on energy storage, mega energy storage batteries. Toyota is having focus on fuel cells. General Motors have Uttam batteries they are preparing. Kia and Hyundai, they have their goals for electric vehicles 2025. Mercedes-Benz has a plan for 2025 for having a major electric vehicles. BMW has i3, i4 and ix models. They have big plan for 2030 for electric vehicles and global sustainability. Volvo also has plan for 2030 for having a major electric vehicles. As far as Mahindra is concerned, Mahindra is in India and they are making good electric vehicles and they are having a collaboration from various international companies. Nissan, which is a pioneer in electric vehicles, is also focused in major electric vehicles manufacturing. These are some of the automobile companies. They are totally focused 
on electric vehicles and green mobility. So Dr. Gurk, thank you for being here and uh, creating more awareness about green mobility. Uh, I'm sure whatever you've discussed with us today is going to inspire a lot of youngsters to think about sustainability and specifically green mobility. Once again, thank you. Thank you.